Age three, love is my grandmother. Honey is all I ever call her. And I'm her adored little princess. Hers is probably the only truly unconditional love I ever experienced. But by age three and a half, my mother had remarried and we'd moved away, 240 miles away from my precious honey. They tell me I cried nonstop for weeks. My entry into the land of love and loss. Age seven, puppy love, a merry-go-round of, of past notes. I love you, do you love me? Circle yes or no. Yes. When Michael Ford circled no, then without any loss of self-esteem, I just passed the same note to Michael Tillman. <laughs> One of those Michaels was my first kiss. <laughs> now, growing up on a farm in South Georgia where children were to be seen and not heard, love and pain became intertwined in my young, tender psyche. For in that emotional house of horrors, whenever one of us got a whooping, we were told, I'm only doing this because I love you. <laughs> Age 10, I believe Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Jesus, well, the Bible also told me that if I did not accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, then I would burn in the fiery pits of hell for all eternity. God's love, even, is conditional. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm sweet 16. I am so sure this is real love. I mean, he's the one who popped my cherry uh, while we made out in his bullet-backed Buick uh, back, back behind his parents' house in broad daylight. Well, okay, being a, uh, a, a very naive Southern Baptist girl, I really believed that we had committed adultery and we had to get married. And so at 18, I did. He left me a year and a half later. Premature ejection from the tunnel of love. <laughs> At 23, Steve adores me and diligently pursues me. I love being adored and diligently pursued. Besides, Steve needs me. Isn't that part of love? After five years of marriage, I realized his neediness had become total emotional dependence. And all the love I had for him was wiped out. When I left him, I took the dog Tootsie. She loved me unconditionally. <laughs> um, throughout my 30s, I flitted like a butterfly from one romance to the other. The time between meeting and finally leaving is sometimes called falling in love. Looking back, I realize I fell for someone either because he was smitten with me first, or I fell in love with his, his best image. So his uh, potential. So step right up, folks. It's the smoke and mirrors fun house of projected love. At 41, I fell in love with a man and his four-year-old daughter. Woo! Love and instant family. Yeah! What a roller coaster ride this marriage has been. <laughs> It's a good thing I love roller coasters because some of my highest highs and my most painful lessons I have experienced with them. But realizing that amusement park rides alone could not sustain me, I began to really nourish other kinds of love, like love of my mother and brothers and extended family, made all the more poignant when we found out my little brother uh, had cancer. Um, now I'm no longer afraid to tell my friends I love you, especially the cherished ones that I have spent years with, laughing and crying and bearing our souls to one another. But sadly, in the past three years, I lost my dear friends, Beth and Cecile, and Brother Ken, and all of them were younger than me, and all of them, so I really get it now. Life is short, and it is precious, and I've, I've got to do my best to keep on loving and keep myself open-hearted. And most importantly, I am finally learning that the greatest love I will ever give is the love and kindness I give to my own precious heart. Mm.